Huddle with paperplusoffice.co.nz, your local office supplies specialist, now open for business. On the Huddle this evening, Jock Anderson from the NBR. Hello, Jock. Good day, Larry. How and uh, I'm very well. Uh, Cameron Slater from Whale Oil and the editor of The Truth will be joining us in just a moment. Uh, so, Jock, uh, first to you, off the back of the massacre in the United States uh, in Connecticut, calls for tougher gun controls. One Democrat has already drafted a bill. In fact, I think there's a couple of bills being drafted. One is to limit the clips, the magazines, to a maximum of 10 bullets. Another one is allowing teachers to carry a gun uh, inside school grounds. Uh, Anyway, essentially, the target is semi-automatic weapons. How do you see this, Jock? Well, what you have to remember um, with this, and not taking anything away from the tragedy, of course, is is that American gun law and gun ownership and gun control is completely different to what we have here. Um, They have it enshrined uh, in their constitution. Largely, they're entitled to, um, to hold firearms um, for one of the primary reasons is for self-defence. Now, we don't have that, of course, in New Zealand. Now, it would seem to me that no amount of, of actual legislation or playing around with the size of magazines and whether you can fire 10 rounds in half a minute or whatever, none of that is going to change in any way a nutcase who is completely determined to get his hands on firearms and go and create, um, you know, lethal mayhem as these people do from time to time, you know, in the States and elsewhere. Um, it, it's interesting, you know, from what we've heard that, that his mother um, was either a shooter or was a survivalist or whatever on earth she was, but hmm. he obviously had easy access to firearms. So, I mean, this is one of those cases where you, you nev- you're never going to stop this no matter what you do. I think you have to make a distinction between legally held um, firearms and illegally obtained firearms. Yeah, and I take your point about the right to bear arms, the Second Amendment. I think that's important. Clinton, uh, he he actually banned certain types of uh, semi-automatic weapons, but that actually lapsed 10 years later. I think it was 2004. Anyway, Cameron Slater from Whale Oil and the editor of The Truth is with us. What is your take on the on the, t- the calls now coming for tougher gun control doesn't affect us because we don't live in the United States, I suppose, Cameron. But what's your take on this? Uh, I, Obama is is sitting there uh, saying that he's going to do something. He promised to do that in 2008 when he was first elected. He didn't do anything. In fact, what Obama has done since he took over has sold more guns than anybody else. He's touted as the, the world's best gun salesman uh, because of a result of, of what he's saying. But he's also impotent. Because the gun laws are controlled by the state, hmm. the federal government. And so we can't do anything. And I agree with what Jock said before. Is, is The issue is not uh, that, that guns are causing these problems. The issue is much deeper than that. And I blogged on that earlier today. And what we're seeing is, in actual fact, is the gun culture that they talk about. There's actually a lower incidence now of guns than there has ever been. Uh, in the United States, but we're seeing these these mass murders and these killings. But what we do see across uh, the United States is a massive increase in prescription medicines for depression and, and for mental illness. And I think that's where you've got to focus uh, the issues, not on, on firearms. In actual fact, if the teachers in the to firearms, then it's unlikely so many would have been killed. Mm. But see, I don't understand, Jock, why do you need an assault weapon that can, you know, spray 30 or 4 bullets in a nanosecond? What, what's the point no, of that? Thing, I think this is a misnomer. People talk about assault weapons and, and black rifles and that sort of thing. No, these are perfectly legitimate military firearms. Now, the, the point is, there's large numbers of people um, all over the world who are either... Uh, ex-military or still in the military or in law enforcement or whatever, who know um, these firearms and actually enjoy shooting them in competitions. I mean, here in New Zealand, you know, we've got a service rifle association, which obviously started off in the old days with bolt action 303s, but our service rifles have um, improved and um, and become more sophisticated over the years to include, you know, self-loading rifles, semi-automatic rifles, etc. People enjoy shooting these in a, competi- in a safe, competitive way. Now, they should not be um, stopped or prevented um, or stoned in the street for doing that because they are seen as, you know, assault rifles or that they're somehow any worse or badder than um, a conventional bolt-action rifle. We'll come back in just a moment. Jock Anderson, Cameron Slater on the huddle. It's coming up 13 to 6. Back up. Larry Williams, drive with the big-
business banking specialists at West. Back on the huddle with Jock Anderson and Cameron Slater. Let, just let's stay with this uh, topic, uh, Cameron, if we can. So, sure. Jock says effectively, uh, if I if I take him correctly, he says it's okay to have a machine gun because we go and do some target shooting. Well, you know, a machine gun for They're goodness' sake. Machine gun, Larry. They're well, hold on. Guns. If they, look. One of these children had as many as 11 shots fired into them, and, and you know, as I said, just a nanosecond, a few seconds. What is the point? Every the right to bear arms is fine. In fact, we we have the right to bear arms. We can go get a license and and buy a rifle if we want. No, to. correction, Larry, you hey? don't have the right not in New Zealand. No, we don't. Have I can go and buy a gun, Jock. No, it's a privilege in New Zealand, not a right. Yeah, but I can. not oh, I understand that. Yeah, but I can. Only if you're deemed to be a fit and proper person. Oh well, that might be a problem. Yeah, yeah you're dead right. The other thing too. Requirements. It's quite different here. Quite different. The, the other thing too is is in Connecticut they have the fifth toughest gun laws in the in the United States. And That's true. In fact, this kid, by having those two firearms, he's not a kid, he's 20, so having those two pistols was actually breaking the law because the permit uh, uh, regime in place in Connecticut says that you're not allowed to have a, a uh, permit to carry a pistol at 21. Now, I heard Leighton this morning saying, oh, you know, well, what about locking these up? He shot his mother. You know, do you don't think he can, couldn't have found the keys to the gun safe even if they were locked up? I mean, there's a lot... It, it's not guns that are the problem. It, it's, it's a failing in the mental health uh, situation in the United States by plying people with drugs that have horrid side effects. Unless you've actually been on those drugs and actually know what it's like, it's very hard to com- comment on it. Well, yeah, but I don't know whether this kid was on drugs, was he? He will have been. Will I'll he? Tell you right now, I'll tell you right now, he will have been. Isn't one thing a fact here, though, Jock? These massacre-type shootings uh, in the United States and the rest of the world are becoming too regular. Yes, they are. And, I mean, there, you know, there's something in what Cam says. There are lots of disturbed people, and there are probably a lot more disturbed people, not necessarily young people, but there are a lot of disturbed young people around. I mean... For argument's sake, let's not, not get off on a tangent, but look at the youth suicide rate in New Zealand, which mm. is an extremely high. A lot of these people are very disturbed. Now, if you're a disturbed person and you've got a mum who's got guns and you know where the guns are and you can get into the cabinet, mm. they might not be locked up. If you're going to go off your tree, you've got the stuff right there in front of you. That but the does thing not, is, too, Jock, this, does does mean, this does not mean that the millions and millions of legal um, firearms owners uh, in the world are going to do the same. They're not going to do that. And, and the other thing, too, is if you're going to go, go on a rampage like this, you're going to want to do it in some place where you're not going to get shot at back. And the pro- problem is that there is a federal law in place that says you're not allowed to have firearms in schools. Now, some states have overridden that and challenged it, and a good place example of that is Montana. In Montana, in each classroom, the teachers are actually uh, given lock boxes, have handguns in the classrooms, they're in the libraries, they're dr- drilled on if people come into those schools and those areas with that. But there's, the problem is, is that no one's actually going to do that because there's a really good chance you're going to get stopped really quickly. Thank you so much. That is Cameron Slater and Jock Anderson on the Huddle Murray Deacon to follow. It's now 8 to 6.